Hello, and welcome to another guided session. In this session, we are going to be talking about setting new goals, starting a new year, a new beginning, and setting new resolutions. And that can be a very important step in bringing change that is everlasting, change that will take you into a new level of success and happiness. And in order to do this, we need to give our attention to the very most important thing, which is ourselves. We need to concentrate and set goals and clear our minds of the clutter that comes from pollution around our environments and those are things that we often do not notice things like chatter negative talk stress anxiety daily challenges at work in our relationships and beyond it is for this very reason we must be vigilant and strict with ourselves in finding a time in which we can concentrate our efforts in finding new and innovative ways to help ourselves in becoming a person that is more aware, more in line with the spirit, the body, and the mind. You see, what happens often is that our minds are so cluttered that we often mistaken that clutter to be something that is beneficial. And that puts us out of alignment with our inner selves and we are often unbalanced which leads to bodily dysfunctions and lack of sleep and many other things. In order to do the very best that we can, we must set aside a time in which we are able to concentrate on the very fundamentals of what makes us successful, what makes us forthright in our endeavors to become better, better as a human being, better than who we were before, and walk towards better a future, a future that is filled with happiness, that is filled with worry-free days, that is filled with joy of living. So let us begin by taking a comfortable position, whether you would like to sit upright in a folded leg position, or whether you like to recline in a chair or on your bed with your head resting comfortably, then you can begin the process. But before you do, please ensure that your phone is off that no one can disturb you and all the lights around you is turned down or, or is off so that you may concentrate your attention on the inner self. Once you're ready, we may begin. And when we begin, do remember that thoughts may come into your mind and let them go away like a stream that flows down a path and disappears at the very end and only new ones may come in and let them pass that is the nature of mind it is the fluidity the flexibility and the dexterity of the mind to put attention in things that are needed and sometimes things that are often neglected this is why we begin this process by clearing our minds and for that we have to begin with our breath.
So I invite you to rest your legs in a comfortable position. Let your arms hang by your side or place them on your knees with the palms pointing upwards if you are in a seated position. When you have your palms open and facing up, you will find that you have a certain sensations, so sensations in the middle of your palm that is often associated with heat and tingling sensations. That means your body is relaxing. And if you haven't yet reached that level, it is all okay because everyone begins from a place and works towards that part where one can find inner peace by simply relaxing the body and the mind follows. It's such that when your mind follows, your body relaxes and as your body relaxes, your mind goes deeper and deeper, leaving you feeling in a comfortable, relaxed state. And often this is the result of tension we have held throughout our day. And this is when we can begin by relaxing those muscles. And those muscles can be little things like the muscles around your eyes. And if you haven't yet closed your eyes, please do so now. And take a deep breath in on a count of four. One, two, three, four, and hold it for count of two. One, two, and we're gonna let it out on a count of four. One, two, three, four. Now that is half a circle. A full circle would be the count of, again, this, 10. We start one, two, three, four, and we hold our breath. One, two, and we let our breath go. One, two, three, four. As you slow your breath down, you can start doing it in your own counts. Put your attention on your breath and count with me on the inside and one, two, three, four. Hold now, one, two, and release. One, two, three, four. And that's how you do it. You let your breath be still and flow naturally from your nostrils into your lungs, letting the breath sink down to your belly. And as you hold your breath, realize that your body is standing straight up with your muscles aligned. Whether you're lying down or in a seated position, your body will react to the breath. The breath leads the path and leading the path, you'll find that each relaxing breath that you take also relaxes the muscles around your chest and your belly and your shoulders. And now bring your attention as you take a deep breath in to the back of your neck. Let those muscles relax around your neck and the back of your neck, allowing your jaw to also relax and following the muscles behind your ears and also your scalp. These tiny minuscule muscles are the pathways to micromuscular relaxation. And micromuscular relaxation is a very important step in bringing attention and awareness into your body if you are able to relax those muscles that are fundamentally important in helping you 
shape your life. And those muscles could be as simple as your lips and your jaw and your cheeks. If you bring your attention there, we can breathe in and relax those muscles with your breath out. And when you do so, we can find out how much tension you have held in your body. And as you let go with each breath, the tension, we can realize that your tension can drift down towards your arms, towards your chest, and all the way down to your fingertips. While it passes, the attention can relax the forearms, the biceps, the triceps, even the palm of your hands, letting your fingers gently curl into a naturally relaxed state. And please bring your attention now to the palms of your hand. If you see the palm on the left, is very different than the palm on the right. The tension, the attention, the heat is all very different. And when you are able to notice these changes, these fundamentally different things in your body, you are bringing the right attention to the right parts of your body by creating control over your body's fundamental parts. Parts that you use every day, every part of your body is like a tool, a machine that functions, breathes, and lives in the consciousness that you exist. And in that consciousness, you can find that attention is a very fragile thing. You have to put your attention in the right places to feel that you have control. And the more you bring your attention to controlling those parts of your body, the more control you can exert in finding the path to unconsciousness, to the parts of your mind that hold the keys to finding new ways and new venues in creating a more successful and happy person. And for that, we can also continue our attention to drift down. As it drifts down, you can let your back and your hips and your joints to relax, allowing the relaxation to sink down towards your legs and your kneecaps, relaxing your calves all the way down to your toes. And you can also find that if you gently wiggle your toes, that you are actually in control of your toes, your feet, your legs. Yet we often do not put our attention to these things. And when we do, we can see that the attention also brings awareness. Awareness that when you relax your feet, you can also relax your mind. And as your breath relaxes, you go down deeper deeper into a state of relaxation, which opens the doorways to finding yourself in a more calm and gentle state. And that gentle state is where it all begins. Gentle state of relaxation, openness and mindfulness of things that are floating, transitory, and also eternal. Eternal in that each breath is considered an inspiration. Inspiration to wake up the consciousness in the unconscious way. That means you can delve into the things that your mind has already known and has recorded throughout your life. Throughout each moment that you have experienced has a record in the archives of your deeper recesses of your mind. That which we call the unconscious mind controls everything from the, your body's temperature to your digestive system, to your heart's rate, to everything else, including your body's temperature. Yet this unconscious process is often hidden from us because we pay no attention to it. Yet we have 
very little control over the rate of our heart or our body's temperature that is solely in autopilot that is controlled by the unconscious. And that unconscious has all the skills that you have ever mastered, whether you are riding a bicycle or you're driving or anything that you have done throughout your life has been stored there and turns on automatically without you thinking about it. Even the process of brushing your teeth is a process that is learned and mastered where you are not considering how to do it anymore, but yet all your unconscious knows how to do it without you thinking about it. That is why we often forget that we have done something when we have not paid our attention to it. That's why it's important to be conscious only when things call for it, like calling your attention to your breath to go down deeper. And deeper we can go by simply letting go, letting go of the tension, letting go of the frustration, letting go of all the things that hold us back. And letting go begins by realizing that your attention has been drifting throughout the year, throughout the months, throughout the days, on things that may have been not the very important things, things that may have occupied your mind unnecessarily. Maybe it was something that you were angry about, you held tension for, or you had concerns and anxieties that have not yet been alleviated due to the fact that you're paying too much attention to it. Yet your attention should be placed on things that can make positive change in your life. So instead of paying your attention, the things that you have not been able to resolve, pay your attention to things that can change and will change if you put your attention to it. So if you are struggling with weight loss and you have not been able to eat right or not have been able to shed your extra pounds, then you can pay your attention into the idea that you can be skinny and not pay attention so much about eating or trying to control yourself, but rather finding pleasures in knowing that you have successfully managed to do things that are beneficial in helping you to lose weight. And that may be simple things like skipping the ice cream or or thinking about how to eat more healthy and making the preparations and the time to do so. And it could also stretch into things that you have held back from. Maybe that's because you were afraid or you had fears about launching into a new ground and leaving your comfort zone, whether that's starting a new job or a new relationship that you so deserve if you but see that you are a unique person, a person that can contribute and give so much to this world, to the ones that are around you who can only see how wonderful and magical you are. They only took the time. Yet you first have to realize that your self-worth is very much equated to your beliefs, beliefs of who you are and what you are. If you see yourself as a successful person, that's what will become of your life. As Buddha once said, you become what you think about the most. So if you think of yourself as a successful person, a person who strives to do the very best and is not afraid to take chances and opportunities and seize them at the right moment, then you become the person that you always wanted to be. 
a person of success, a person of happiness. And happiness only comes to those who know that happiness is not a thing. It is a feeling, a feeling that you conjure up through the efforts of your everyday life. It could be gardening or doing a hobby or drinking a cup of coffee and taking the time to enjoy the taste. The taste that you feel that you deserve. And maybe it's like rewarding yourself with a massage or a gift that you so deserve because you are a wonderful person. Whether you believe this or not, you are what you are. And your beliefs can only alter if you put your mind into not realizing those qualities that make you a wonderful person. Maybe you have done things in your life that you regret, but there are also things in your life that you have done so well. Maybe you have been generous, or you have successfully achieved something, or something that you have done in your past that you are feeling very proud of. And those are the things that can define who you are at this very moment. Those things that you feel are your forte, your strong point. And when you bring your attention to your forehead and between your eyes and to your third chakra, you can see that your attention can drift down, down to where you can see the inner beauty that you possess in around your chakra that's around your heart. It could be a warm glow, a color, something that is so vibrant and moving. It could be spinning in a certain direction that you can also see if you are able to put your attention there. And you can even give color because the colors do exist and the vibrancy is there only if you care to look with your third eye. These things have been hidden from us because we have failed to notice things that are beyond our immediate surrounding. We have placed so much attention to our touches, to our tongues, to our taste buds, to our eyes and mouths and ears, and so much more lies beyond what we call intuition. Intuition knowing that your gut feeling is always right. And that gut feeling is the one that will call upon you in the times where certain decisions have to be made. And if you let your mind go and follow your heart, you'll find that the intuition serves you right. Intuition that is followed without doubt always leads to a path of success because then you are following your heart and you, when you follow your heart there is no regret. Regret from things that you haven't had done and when your days are done on this earth you will find that you have followed your heart there are no regrets. Regrets only come when we fail to follow our hearts. So in this new period that you can define by drawing a line in time, a line, a date, a time that you can say, this is where I begin. I begin by saying that this is going to be my new resolution. This is going to be the line from which I will make a fresh start. And of course, everything moves in lines and in lines that may mean that there might be setbacks. But setbacks are only temporary, and temporary because you are bound to face them. And if you have given yourself the permission to know that the setbacks are going to occur, that you get right back on and ride the next wave upwards. Upwards both financially, emotionally, mentally, and in relationship wise you can bring so much more and you can find that your life improves exponentially when you place your attention 
to those things that are the most important. That begins with your well-being. Have you taken good care of your body? Have you exercised enough, eaten well? Have you reduced anything that is harmful to your body, whether it's smoking, drinking, or any substances that are not meant to be in your body? Maybe you can let these go and forget them like things of the past. Imagine things that have been in the past, like the schools that you have left and houses that you have lived in that are no longer part of your now's existence, but a past memory that has been left. And these things can all become past memories, those things that are not beneficial to your immediate life. And begin by replacing those things with new things, new things being things that are productive, Maybe it's taking up a hobby or making a new commitment to doing something wonderful or making plans for new changes. Changes that can mean the difference between being a successful and happy person and one that is left in the comfort zone. Comfort zones are very, very addictive. Addictive in that people think that by staying in their comfort zones that things will change. Comfort zones are like cushioning. And that's why people are afraid to leave their jobs or start new relationships or even make commitments into new things. But this is where you begin by saying, I take on. I take on the chance to become someone better someone more resourceful, someone who's more wealthy or someone who's more happy, simply by making choices, by caring for the very things that are important in our lives. It's like watering a plant. The water you give gives life and the life that it gives returns to you in seven folds. So if you have someone in your life that you care very much about, you can take the time to show them that you care. It could be a little gift, a kind word, a gesture of kindness that can come from doing something special for that someone. So that your kindness becomes a ritual, a ritual that they re return by saying, I appreciate you. I appreciate the kindness that you show. And if you do this without expectations, then you can realize that things become better and you don't expect the return back from your efforts. And if your efforts do not return, then do not fear because fear is the root of all evil. And evil is what we breed when we have anxiety and concerns that are detrimental to our well-being. That is why we have to let go of fear. And fear is just illusion. Illusion that things may turn out to be less than what we have expected. Yet again, here comes the attention. Attention, if you put your attention into the things that are gonna be wonderful, outcomes that are gonna be beautiful, then you have less fear. Yet if you put your attention to fear, fear will grow like watering a plant. So water the side that is beautiful and sunny. See new opportunities and open your eyes to new wonders because new wonders will carry you forth, forth into a place where you are more elevated, in a place where that you can find happiness. And happiness is not defined by the material gains or achievements, but it's defined in your mental attitude. 
It could be as simple as taking a step when you are disabled, or it could be a step into finding someone that you really love. And it doesn't always have to be material, but material things are signs that we have achieved something. It is the number of things that we collect, which are also transitory because you might have found that your old LPs were outdated when the tapes came out, and the tapes were outdated when CDs came out. And CDs are now obsolete because the music is all digital and resting in your smartphone or in your computer. And that also is the transition from one state to another. And you may find that those eight tracks and tapes are of no value. Very much like your car or your personal belongings will be of little value for years to come. Yet you yourself, who has placed so much attention, so much concern on these things, are things that are transitory. So don't let the transitory to become the permanent, permanent in that you keep things in your mind that are of little value. Value comes from the fact that you know things can be transitory and can provide you happiness in this very instant, in this very moment, like the feeling you may be feeling now that you have done something wonderful for yourself. And that state of mind is what you should be looking for, a state of mind in which you find calmness, composure. And this is where doors open to new things, things of change, yet you have may not yet decided that a plan is necessary, a plan to see things through. And that means you may not have placed yourself in a state where you are doing practices in meditation or, or hypnosis or getting time for yourself to do things that are beneficial. Yet without a plan, everything fails. All wars are fought on plans. And who without plan fails? Because like Dorothy in Wizard of Oz, if you do not know where you're going, it doesn't matter where you're going. You cannot find what you're going for if you have no direction. That's why it does matter which path you choose. And make a commitment now to listen to these recordings, to take the time to work on the inside, from inside where you water like a plant, the very nurturing of your emotional and mental state will bear fruits in health and wealth and in relationships. And in that you can find a peace of mind a peace of mind that shows that you can be a success. Success that becomes success in your own terms, not by the very definitions of others, but the very definition of who you are. Who you are is defined only by you. You are the only one who can say, I am a successful person. I'm a happier person. There are a lot of people in this world who have a lot of money but are very unhappy. And there are a lot of people with material things in this lifetime that have very little count except the money that they have. And it is for this reason we are going to bring this session to a close. And in this session, we are going to say the very first thing, very first thing that becomes an inspiration, which is the breath. We take a deep breath in and we say, thank you. Another breath, and say thank you. Another breath and say thank you. Another breath, 